This episode of Leading Remote Teams has really led us to revisit fundamental principles for leaders, such as self-awareness and empathy, as well as the importance of creating an environment that is psychologically safe for our people. On this episode, we have Sharon Lim, who is a leadership coach and facilitator, and Nim Sivakumaran, who heads The Co, one of Southeast Asia's leading entrepreneurial communities and co-working spaces. So hi, Sharon and Nim. Welcome to this episode of Culture Matters. How are you doing? Good, thank Good. you. Good. It's interesting times, you know, a lot of people working from home and working remotely, um, obviously posing various challenges and uh, things to adapt to, etc. So while we're on the topic of working remotely, there's a big question which a lot of people ask, how do you lead and manage remote teams? From my own experience, you know, we, we operate um, across uh, different cities. Um, so managing the teams remotely is, is not anything new. You know, what's new for me is um, I often travel to the different cities, so I'm unable to do that for, for obvious reasons. Um, so I think the, the key thing is you know, just being uh, regular communication with the team. It doesn't always have to be about work just to check in with the, with the team, making sure that you know, they're okay. Encouraging you know, conversations still to flow, although we're not in the same room, still you know, trying to encourage people to you know, uh, speak to each other. And then I'm always there. You know, if anyone needs to get me, um, I'm, I'm, I make myself available. Like you said, it's being available, right? It's being contactable. Maybe it's not about work. It could be just to check in. Hey, how are you doing, right? Yep. Is that the case for you as well, Sharon? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think what um, I want to stress is the fact that we are social beings. Even if we're introverted or extroverted, we all want that social connection. Some like it a lot and some like it <laughs> loud. Some yeah. like it more intimate and quieter, but nonetheless, everyone needs that social interaction. So whether it is in a social setting and friends or family or especially in the office, it shouldn't be any different. Yeah. So to lead a remote team, it's critical, like Nim says. Whether COVID or no COVID, it's absolutely critical to have that open, trusted uh, communication. A lot of times I hear leaders give lip service to it. You know, they'll say, oh yeah, my door's always open. Oh yeah, you can contact me anytime. Uh, but often nobody wants to. So it's not just about creating uh, that availability in terms of time or space where your door is actually open. But energetically, your attitude or your mindset has to also match that. Mm. Of wanting to genuinely listen and be open to people. So yeah, your door can be open. Uh, your schedule might be available, but if nobody wants to, then that's a great red flag that something's wrong, mm -hmm. uh, that they don't really want to come to you. What are some of the sort of tips or any advice that you could give to leaders to make remote work more successful for their people? What I try to um, share this with the team, and they've been fortunate to share it with me as well, is just to be curious. Have a genuine interest in people, and from that, conversation can spark. It could spark into something that is very focused on innovation projects at work, or it could just be on a human connection level. Have conversations flow in a very natural manner here. I don't think I can beat that answer, actually, because I love the word curiosity. I think that has been my all-time favorite word. What's the buzzword right now? Emp empathetic curiosity, right? Yeah, that's the buzzword now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it starts with mindset and the curious mindset and an empathetic mindset. And if you genuinely have that, authentically have that, then you're on the right track. Everything else on what to do, how to do it, how often to do it, comes from the mindset of, if I am truly curious, if I'm truly authentic, if I'm truly empathetic about my people in another part of the world, I will figure out how to do it. So it comes from that mindset. So I often ask leaders in coaching situations, right? What is your mindset? A lot of times the leaders aren't willing to be in that people leadership role 
they are there because of the promotion or the higher pay or the prestige or this is the only way up they know but really as a leader it's about people mm. and if you don't have that if you don't want to do that then you are in the wrong job Given the uncertainty and the new way of working, I think they need reassurance. But I think it's just more communication. There's no excuse now not to do it. And a lot of times when I find myself in a video conference, a lot of people, especially a large video meeting, a lot of them actually switch off their videos. Mm. Yeah, and I often ask, please turn on your videos because that's the whole point. I need to look at your face, you need to look at mine. You know, otherwise we'll just be on a call. What's the point, right? So, I I find that it's the connection that is key, and it's not just about communicating verbally, right? It's just knowing the presence of somebody there. I mean, like the non-verbal communication, the body language, the eye-to-eye yeah. -eye contact or the face-to-face -face contact. So important, and you feel the same way as well, Nim. Yeah, I think with technology, there's always distractions. You know, you could be on a, you know, you could be on a call, and then maybe you know you're texting away on on, on the side. Whereas I think when you're face to face, you're you know you're so so <laughs> solely there. You trust your team. You know, they they trust um, in you as well. Um, and you know, I, I guess from a leader's perspective, is you're there to assist them. If there's roadblocks, yes, where you know, leaders could come in and you know, encouraging them to talk freely, share ideas freely. Um, I, I think like Sharon was saying, you know, from a, if you have a curious mindset, it can spin into many good things. Um, but I think that's, that's probably a core, core value to have. I love what you said about trust. And especially now, because it links back to the time management as well. So sometimes leaders will say, oh, well, now that everyone's working from home, I don't know if they're actually doing anything at all. They have to log in at a certain time just to make sure that they're there or I have to call them just to spot check. And that changes the entire relationship of trust because in the office, you can see somebody's at their desk and you're assuming that they're actually working and not surfing Facebook or something. But when they're not around and you can't see them, the imagination goes wild and you go, oh, are they working, are they not working? A good leader will say, I trust that you will get the work done. Whether you are out shopping, you know, grocery shopping at 11 a.m. in the morning or 3 p.m. when you should be in the office, it doesn't matter. Mm. Is the person getting the work done? Yep. Because this person could be working at 11.30 p.m. instead of 11 a.m. Yeah. Right? So, as a good leader, are you, are you looking for results? Or are you just looking for... Um, are, you, are you mixing up form and function? I think sometimes people can kind of get confused between being busy or looking busy. Mm. and being productive. I guess the only, the, the sort of the flip side of working from home is that you're only judged on your productivity. Which is how it should be, honestly. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter whether you, you sell at 10 a.m. in the morning or 10 p.m. If you're selling and you're getting deals done and it comes in. Yeah, outcome focus. <laughs> I do agree, it sounds better to over communicate than under communicate. And generally, that's a good idea. But boss keeps messaging me, you know, like, <laughs> am I in trouble or, you know, are they keeping an eye on me? So if you have those authentic conversations, and curiosity it's you know it's, it's a top-down bottom-up approach so you know it's not in terms of the boss trying to form the conversations all the time it, i guess it's creating those environments where people can talk they can share ideas you know sometimes they're silly ideas which is great you know uh, there's no silly idea so i think um that's that's a challenge for uh, for a lot of companies so. i think it's about intent first and foremost it would be great if your intentions were good and clear and you articulate those intents as well. So it's not just about the frequency of communication, it's also the clarity yep. of communication. Mm. So if you're texting and saying, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing now? <laughs> then yeah, sure, I, if I'm the recipient of that message, I'm also going to get really annoyed and worried and anxious. 
So communication has so many parts, right? The tone and the clarity and the content and the words that you use and all of that and pitch. The question then is, what is your intent? Because if, as a leader, if you're coming from a space of anxiety and fear and nervousness, it is definitely going to ooze into yeah, your team. Everyone's yeah. going to feel the panic. Maybe they weren't panicking, but now they're panicking because you're panicking. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you set the tone in the team. It's important for self-reflection. It's important about being aware of your, of how you're showing up. Yeah. Because if you're not even aware that you're antsy, then you definitely wouldn't be aware that your anxiousness is, is affecting other people. Also with empathy, you develop self-awareness. Yeah. You know, you've got to be aware of, you know, what makes you tick, how you perform. Um, because you got to look after yourself, first of all. You know, people, people feed into that. What does psychological safety mean to you? So I'm putting myself in the shoes of an employee or a staff. And a psychological safe place to work, to me, is a place where I'm trusted, that I am respected of the choices I have made. There is an assumption that everything that's done was done with positive intent. So if something doesn't get done in the way that my boss wants it to get done or when it gets done or how it gets done, the first thing he or she doesn't say is, why isn't this? And it goes into a blank game, but goes, oh, okay, well, that's not really like Sharon to do that. So let's find out a little bit more. So again, curiosity, empathy comes in, right? When that happens, I don't go into a defense mode like, oh, it's not me, it was him or her, and then another finger pointing situation happens. So psychological safety for me is being able to be respected, to be trusted, and finally, that there is an assumption of positive intent. In part one, we have gotten some momentum with timely reminders on how, as leaders, we need to work on strengthening our self-awareness and to be ready to set the tone as well as frame ourselves with a mindset of empathetic curiosity in order to grow our teams. Next, we'll be moving on to what psychological safety at work means and how we need to continue to prioritize this when we do not have the usual visual markers that we use when we work in the same physical space. This and other insights can be found in part two of this episode of Leading Remote Teams.